I'm hoping for Zara. Very soon.
Good morning. Today we are reminded that our God is not one of judgment, but our God is love, and God's love is eternal. Before we begin, let us take a few moments to quietly thank God for mercy and grace. Again, on this fourth weekend of Lent, we celebrate Rejoice Sunday as we draw ever closer to the celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Let us pause to acknowledge our sins and prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading, from, <clears throat> a reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nation and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. The enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, 
where, be where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was fulfill to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of the people, let him go up, and may this, his God be with him. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we are dead in our transgressions, brought to us life with Christ by grace. When you have been saved, raise up with him and seated us with him in the, in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come, he might know the immeasurable riches of the grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but Whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But Whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. That first reading from uh, the book of Chronicles is always intended to connect with the Gospel, a theme And part of the theme is how God comes to the rescue again and again. In that reading, we heard about how the infidelity of the people of Israel ultimately led them to be overrun by the king of the Chaldeans who packed them all up and took them to Babylon and kept them there and beat them up for years. And then... Cyrus, the king of Persia, became in charge of that whole area and he released them and let them go back to their homeland. Well, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. On this uh, Leitare Sunday, Rejoice Sunday, this news is the great and liberating gift which the gospel brings, the ultimate meaning that only love can give. It reveals our dignity as men and women created in the image and likeness of God. It reveals humanity's calling, which is to find fulfillment in love. It discloses the truth about us and the truth about life, the truth that renews us and inspires our young people. I say this because several of our young people will be confirmed this afternoon at St. William's by Bishop Hine. We need their faith. We need their idealism, their generosity, so that the gift of this sacrament in their lives will help keep us all young in the Holy Spirit and build up the body of Christ with the joy and inspiration that comes from serving the Lord with gladness, doing his will, pursuing holiness, and using our talents in the service of others the Holy Spirit will descend on the confirmands today 
they will be sealed with the gift of the Spirit and sent forth to be Christ's witnesses. What does it mean to receive the seal of the Holy Spirit? It means being indelibly marked, inalterably changed, a new creation. For those who have received this gift, nothing can ever be the same. Being sealed with the Spirit means not being afraid to stand up for Christ, letting the truth of the gospel permeate the way we see and think and act as we work for the triumph of love that God has given us that we might not perish but might have eternal life. As we pray for the confirmands, let us ask that the power of the Holy Spirit will revive the grace of our own confirmation. May he pour out his gifts in abundance on all of us and let us rejoice to be renewed in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, the spirit of wonder and awe in God's presence. And so go forth to proclaim the risen Christ and draw every heart to God who so loved the world that he gave his only son. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our prayers before God today. For the church, may God bless her with disciples who confidently proclaim God's love to the whole world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those who serve in public office may embrace the dignity of life and work to protect our most vulnerable citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our confirmandi, may they give witness to Christ 
by lives built on love and serving others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That God, who sent his Son to save and not to condemn, will touch the hearts of all members of our parish family and bring them the gifts of repentance, forgiveness, and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, may they be shown a radiant sign of God's abiding love to uphold and strengthen them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us, especially Jessica Lynn Serlong and Caleb Rock Sumter, may they experience eternal peace in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and ever-living God, grant a favorable hearing to all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take, take the away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. 
take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're moving into those wonderful times of this month of March. This week we mark the feast day of St. Patrick on Wednesday and St. Joseph on Friday. On Friday in a special way because, as you know, Pope Francis has declared this the year of St. Joseph and a number of years already has included his name in our Eucharistic prayers. On Friday there will be a a parade, kind of a, a procession over at uh, St. William's Parish. And I know they'd be happy to have anyone come and join them. There's more information in our bulletin and online. Also this week, we will be having our Lenten communal tenant services. One will be at St. William's on Thursday evening at 6.30, and then the other at St. John Vianney on Saturday morning at 10.30. And so we will not be having the regular scheduled confessions here on Saturday morning. We'll all be over at St. John Vianney. May you have a wonderful St. Patrick, St. Joseph's Day. And again, thanks to all of you who are so good to help us prepare the church now after Mass for, for the next Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>